quote which Moses spake unto all Israel. All right, so we're just letting you know Moses is speaking to the Israelites. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26. Moses is a prophet, right? Okay. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Well, let's wait till you get there. 11. Verse 26. Read it again. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Read on. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. What is Moses saying to the Israelites? There's a blessing and a curse if you, if you, follow, what the, if you follow what the Lord your God has commanded you, there will be a blessing. There's and also it, a curse if you do not follow and they do obey. not follow the commandments. Exactly. Now, what are the curses that God said he's going to put on the Israelites for not breaking the commandments? Or for for not following the commandments? Yes. Um, let's see. It says, uh, when the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess, you are to proclaim the blessing at, at Mount Gerizim and the curse at Mount Ebal. Aren't these mountains across the Jordan beyond the western road in the land of Canaanites who live in the Arabah? opposite of Gilgal, near the oaks of Moriah, for you are about to cross the Jordan and, and enter and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you when you possess it. Uh, and it settled in. Be careful to follow. It's not in that chapter. No, it's the next chapter. No, it's not in the next chapter. It's the next chapter. Right? So we're going go to we're gonna go to chapter 28. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, let's, let's start at verse 16. This is the first curse that God says he's going to put on the Israelites. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 28. At verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. The Israelites will be cursed in the city. Read on. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. So the Israelites, if they break the commandments, will be cursed in the cities and in the fields, whithersoever they go and live. That's right. Now, their, their children will be cursed. Now, let's stop right there. How would their children be cursed in, in the future? It's going to say it, right? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. This is another curse. Deuteronomy chapter 28, and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters. This is their children. This is how they'll be cursed. Read. Shall be given unto another people. What is that talking about? Uh, they will be basically taken over by another by another country or another um, it didn't say country or another people another race of people another race of people right thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people you know yeah. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long Absolutely. and there shall be no might in thine hand no might in your hand to give your seed back and people you don't know will eat your lands produce and everything have labored for everything right. you've labeled for. What is this sounding like so far? Uh, That's right. Like slavery. That's right. So God told the Israelites what would happen to them if they break the commandments. Yeah. Countless now, times they were handed over to slavery and, true. and owned by people because yes. of their disobedience to God. Most definitely. And then God ushered in a judge, um, a judge to come in and uh, to take them out of that uh, situation. So the Israelites were freed out of slavery? Um, well, when they were when they were um, following according to the scripture, and they cried out with a great wail, and for the Lord's help, God ushered in a judge such as uh, Samson, Deborah, all of these people that were also prophets, basically speaking to them to basically to, to turn from their ways. the second coming of Jesus Christ where did where does the Bible say the Israelites would be predominantly um, in, in the promised land well they're in the promised land as of now the Israelites are well they're in they're in that area where they're at right now the Israelites are in that yes, area right now but they don't have like the temple was destroyed um, the temple like I'm talking about current present times 
So their place of worship. So who are the Israelites? The Israelites. Yes, sir. Um, are the people are the country of Israel? Okay. Now the majority of are those people are, are the descendants of of uh, right, basically the, uh, the Jewish nation. Gotcha. Now give me the book of Saint John, chapter sixteen and verse thirty-two. John. Yeah, let's see what Jesus Christ said. John. Because Jesus Christ is going to echo a prophecy that was already prophesied by Moses. So we're going to read what Christ said, then we're going to go back. John what? We're going to read St. John chapter 16. John 16. Right now, what I said was, we're going to read what Jesus Christ said. We're going to go back to what Moses said, because it's going to echo the same thing. It's going to identify where they are. Verse? Verse 32. Let's go. St. John chapter 16 and verse 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, speaking to the Jews, read, that ye shall be scattered. So he told the Jews the hour is coming that you're going to get scattered. Exactly. What is he referring to? It's the, that's, um, that's, that's when he, after, after his crucifixion, uh, his uh, nation is going to be scattered because there's going to be uh, basically Let me show you. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 68. What does the word Egypt mean in the Bible? Egypt? Yes, sir. Uh, the nation, like, the nation of Egypt. Uh, All right, give me Exodus 28. Book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Egypt is a cold word, biblically. Like, it brought you into the land of Egypt. So, hold on, real quick before you read it. Yeah. When you read the word Egypt in the Bible, oftentimes, it's referring to a condition that the Israelites were in when they were in Egypt, rather than the specific landmass of Egypt. So it's going to tell you that, right? Here. Look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Egypt out of the house of what? Out of, out the, of the house of bondage. So Egypt is referred to as the house yeah. of bondage. Right? So would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. the Bible says that the Israelites will go to bondage a specific way. Okay. The Jewish people, right. the people in Israel, Israeli, yeah. how did, did they go to slavery? Um, no. They didn't go to no, slavery. No, not as of right now, they're not in slavery. No, I said, did they go they into ever slavery? Go into slavery. Historically. Historically, yes. Okay, how did they get to slavery? They were, they were the, the chosen people that were and what, and what time period? Wait, 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 wait. Like, like historic. Historic. Okay. Of course, historically, this is it's their heritage. Gotcha. Okay. That's their heritage. Okay. Give me Deuteronomy 20 and 68. Now, this is written to the Israelites, and this is what Moses said. What I hope I'm on point. Well, we're about to find out. I mean, I mean, All right, read that. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Read it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. 28 and verse 68. Thank you. It said that the Israelites will go to Egypt again. Egypt means bondage, like you just said. Right. How they would go to bondage? With ships. With what? With, With ships. ships. They would go to bondage on ships. What race of people went to slavery on ships? Um, pretty much. Uh, slavery now on ships. Um, so everyone in Africa. So they were they were in ships that were brought over to the European or European like. Moses said that the Israelites would go to slavery on slave ships. So whoever fits this prophecy are the Israelites. That's right. Gotcha. And somebody's lying. Gotcha. Read it one more time. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So I asked you earlier, I said, well, you might want to write these verses down because you may not have never heard these verses. Egypt on ships. This is historic facts. We know historically that the transatlantic slave trade happened. Right? Would you agree that the transatlantic slave trade happened? Yes, absolutely. What about the sub-Saharan slave trade? Absolutely. What about the Silk, Silk Road slave, slave trade? trade? I have not heard that. Okay, the Silk Road slave trade Oh, is Silk Road. Silk yes, Silk Road. Yes, I know the yep. Silk Road. Yeah. Tang they, Dynasty, the Chinese absolutely. people. Absolutely. Who built the Great Wall of China? Um, uh, 
not not the Chinese. Yeah, who, you, who was it? It was the Israelites. Yeah. It's right. actually so called black people. Okay. The Bible prophesied that the Israelites would break the commandments and that they would go to slavery on slave ships. There's only one race of people that that happened to. So called black people. Absolutely. The people that you're calling Israeli or Jewish people, yeah. they're not Israelites. They're not the true Israelites. Okay. 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 And this proves it. Okay. Read one more time. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Read in the same way Moses said it, or God said that's the same way it's going to happen. Read on. And there ye shall be sold. And there ye shall be sold. <laughs> Unto your enemies. Like right there. Like if you look to the left, uh, your left. Monument there. That yeah. monument, that's yeah. the yeah. square that's house. That's the auction house. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Nowhere on the earth can the Jewish or the Israeli people say, okay, well, this happened to us. Right. And these are the these are the monuments. These, this is documentation. Sure. And this is the Bible verse to prove it. Sure. They can't do it. Right. Read on. And there you shall be so unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen what else and no man shall buy you meaning you're not going to get redeemed from this the jewish people what do they they own almost everything the music industry the food supply yeah but the bible says that the israelites wouldn't be redeemed when they go to slavery on slave sites so how do we okay okay well how do i say okay well I don't know about that. And then I find out that I have to find out the truth through the Bible. Absolutely. That's the only way to find the truth. That's the only way. Absolutely. So what is it now? By that alone, would you admit that the people that you think are the Jews are not the Jews? Yes. Alright, give me give me Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Based on what the scriptures say. What the scriptures say, that's what the Bible says. Right, right, right. Read that. This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 2 and verse 9. Right. I know thy works and tribulation. This is Christ. Right? I know thy works and tribulation. Read on. And poverty. The Jewish people aren't impoverished. They're not in poverty. They get funded millions of dollars yearly. God said he knows the impoverishment of the Israelites. There's one race of people that's impoverished. And been impoverished since eons. Yes, for eons. <laughs> Read on. But thou art rich. But they're rich. They're rich in spirit. All right. If you find out who created the first car, you'll you'll find out it's a so-called black person. You find out who created the first microwave, the cell phone, the airplane, the computers, computers. The, yeah, everything. The cotton gin. Right. But they're they're rich. Right. Read on. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, what is that talking about? Knew that verse. Yeah, of course. He's talking about yeah, he but, but, that verse. Verse. but the point, the point of the matter is, everybody is going to hear and see the waking up of the twelve tribes right. of Israel, the real Israelites, the real Israelites, the real Israelites. That's right. by blood. But, that, but also, too, the Lord has allowed this false prophet, the false doctrine, the false and the antichrist of what it is to inherit the earth. To come in and usher in of, of prior of prior to the second coming. Yeah, most definitely because right. you didn't know Deuteronomy twenty sixty eight. You didn't know who the Israelites were, or if you did know, you didn't admit it. That's antichrist. Right. Because when the, when the, uh, when they crucified the Lord, they said, "Let this blood be on oh, us and our children." Right. Absolutely. How did the Israelites die in America? The same way Jesus Christ died, hanging on a tree, exactly. slaughtered in the streets. Same thing. You're standing on the landmass where the Israelites were auctioned off uh, to different parts of North Carolina, etc., with last names that don't belong to them, a language that doesn't belong to them, and they, a culture that doesn't belong. Give me Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Our table, our table is ready. Our, re okay. our reservation is reservation. ready. Y'all going to the Italian restaurant? We're going to Circle 18. Okay, Circle 18. All right, so yes. check this out real I quick. I appreciate Most it. definitely. Yes. Thank you. I didn't want to be rude. It's all good. It's all good. This is this is this echoes what you just said. Right, read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. I right, started verse 1 real quick. Verse 1. The sin of Judah. Right, because sin is a transgression of the law. Absolutely. Right? Now, the people you don't that, know sin unless you actually know the 
So the people that were given the law were the Israelites. Yes, so sir. if you break the law, you have to be punished for it. Absolutely. What race has been punished on the earth by God? So-called black, Hispanic, right. and Native Americans. Right. They're the Israelites, right. not the people that run the world. Absolutely. They're not being punished by God Absolutely. yet. The sin of Judah reads, is written with a pen of iron. Verse 4. <laughs> verse 4. And thou, even thyself, even Jeremiah, a righteous prophet, which is a black man. You read that in Jeremiah 8 and 21. Read. Shall discontinue from thine heritage. The Israelites will be discontinued from their heritage. Absolutely. Not to call themselves Israelis and claim it in 1948 during the Balfour Declaration. Right? That's not biblical. Right? Read on. Shall discontinue from thine heritage read. that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Yeah, in the land which thou knowest not. Talking about going to a land that you do not know. Exactly. You're being like so tying everything together. You're being sent out on ships. You've been bought into a land that you do not know. That's right. So you all have been lied to. This government lied to you. Your school system oh, lied always, to you. Always. But the point of the matter is, you guys, if you're not Israelites, right? If you would be a modern day Caucasian, sure. you will be an Edomite. And you have to prepare yourself for the second coming of a black Messiah, which is an Israelite, and the waking up of his people. And you're gonna have to serve them in the kingdom of heaven. Absolutely. Right? Revelation 13 and That's verse 9. That's it. 13 verse 9. Yeah. Revelation 13. chapter 13. Verse 9. Right, read that. And it reads, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Read on. Ten. He that leadeth into captivity. The Edomites led the Israelites into captivity and the other races. Read. Shall go into captivity. Read on. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is what? Here is the patience and the faith. Of the saints. And the saints is a that's a biblical bloodline. The saints are the Israelites pursuing to the Bible. That's right. So the saints have been through all this turmoil, punishment, all to wait on the second coming of their Lord for them to receive their promise that they've been promised from the foundation of the world, which is to inherit the nations. That's handmaids and servants. So then what but we are all called as heirs of Christ if you believe in your heart and confess that uh, confess with your, believe in your heart confess with your mouth that Jeremiah, Jesus is Lord you will be saved give me St. John, John, so, John 23 with the tearing of with the tearing of the curtain or in the Holy of Holies upon Jesus' death that broke that broke the, the barrier between um, the Holy of Holies and the uh, the common people if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. Most definitely. And if you are, you will be called heirs of Christ, heirs of God, children. What of is God. an heir? An heir is a. Basically, uh, it's a promise. It's, like if, you, if your father has a property right. and he left it to his children, right. you're your heirs. heirs. You inherit the exactly. kingdom of God. Uh, uh, Ching from China, he can't heir the property of your father. No. The people that are called has a specific name, right? Read that. The book of St. John, chapter 10, and verse 3. To him, the porter openeth. To him, the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice. He's talking about Christ and the sheep. Read. And he calleth his own sheep by name. By what? Mm -hmm. By name. The people that are called has a specific name. name. Mm -hmm. And they're called, they refer to it as the sheep. They're referred to as many names. They're referred to as the Gentiles. Right. But they have a specific name. Sure. Sheep. And what is that name? Right? Sure. The sheep. Yeah. What is the name of the sheep in the yeah. Bible? Let me imagine each other. Bring, bring it up. Jeremiah chapter 50, 50 and verse, verse 17. 17. Right? That's right. Israel, Israel is a scattered sheep. sheep. Israel is a scattered sheep. Right? So the sheep and the people that are called, that all they have to do is believe and confess, are the Israelites. That's what it is. Scattered yeah, sheep is Israel. How is it then that as I, as a believer, being washed, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, how am I not a sheep? Well, you if, wouldn't. If I, because he says if, um, uh, if, if you, um, you know, uh, if you are one of, if you are one of mine, you will know the shepherd's voice. Most definitely. And, and, 
there's also the, the situation that not all people were born in, in a chosen people. Because if you look into uh, if you look into the um, situation of Sorry. I'm nervous. I, I want to answer your first question. You said but you know about what I'm, you born. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm about you to answer. Will hear, you, will hear the, you will hear his voice. Not everyone is uh, is, is, is the elect or predestined individuals. Because uh, 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 the Lord has made some vessels for destruction and some vessels uh, for adornment. Uh, exactly. For this. And in the same situation. Who, who are the vessels that are fitted for destruction? Um, Creator creates the vessels. God, God Himself created those vessels. But I'm asking, who are those vessels that are fitted for destruction? Because um, it, it names it in the Bible. Yeah. Give me Romans chapter nine. Let's start at verse four. Start, start at verse one. Romans chapter nine and verse one. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I can wish that myself were cursed from Christ. From Christ. For my brethren. For my brethren. My kinsmen according to the flesh. So Paul said, I wish I could have gone through the same thing that Christ went through. For my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who's Paul's brethren and kinsmen according to the flesh? Who, who's Paul's brethren according to the flesh? Paul's? Yeah. Uh, uh, what's Paul's uh, race? He um, was... Jewish, but also Roman. I would take the suffix ish out. Jewish. Okay, the, rest, so the suffix was, ish means was, pertaining to. He was uh, he was a Jew, and he was also uh, he was also uh, yeah Roman citizenship. And he was a Roman citizen. Yeah, yeah, dual citizenship. Exactly. Like me, I'm a Jew. Yeah. I have an American citizenship. Yeah. Right. I was my family was taken, brought over here, yeah. but I'm actually an Israelite. Yeah. So Paul, brethren, according to the flesh, is who? Who are Israelites? The Israelites. Read. To whom pertains the adoption? So the adoption pertains to who? Uh, Being adopted back to the Father. Uh, Paul said it pertains to the Israelites. Read on. And the glory. The glory pertains to the Israelites. And the covenants. The covenants. The, full. the new covenant pertains to who? The Israelites. That's right. Read on. And the giving of the law. The giving of the law. And the service of God. Read. And the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, as who has concerning the flesh, what Christ came. So Christ came for the Israelites. The vessels that are fitted for destruction. Go to verse thirteen. Verse thirteen, as it is written, Jacob have I loved. God loves Jacob. That's Esau the Israelites. Hated. But Esau have I hated. Read on. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Read. God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Read on. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Read. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Read on. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. God raised up Pharaoh to do what? To destroy you. To destroy you. So this is talking about Edom. Edom was raised up. For God to destroy them. Edom is the biblical name of who the world ignorantly calls Caucasians. Right? right? And chiefly the elites of the Caucasians, like the Rothschilds, Rockefellers. Right? You know about them? Right, read on. That I might show my power in thee, read. and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. The only way God's gonna get glory is when he destroys the Edomites. Read. Therefore hath he mercy. On whom he will have mercy. Read on. And whom he will, he heard me. Read. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doeth he yet find fault? For who hath res resisted his will? Read. Nay, but O man. Nay, but O man. Who art thou that repliest against God? Read. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Like Esau did. Read on. Hath not the potter power over the clay? Read. Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. Yeah, so Jacob was made to honor, Esau was made to dishonor. Right? And Esau is the vessel fitted for destruction, as well as the other nations. So, 
we will be the Israelites. What? Right? And you have to get this idea out of your head that the Jewish people are the Israelites and that, you know, God loves them and they're the chosen people. That's not in the Bible. They know it, yeah, right? But know. you guys just don't know it. And if you do, you have to be bold enough to, to, to tell the true gospel. Absolutely. Because the true gospel is for the Israelites. Absolutely. That they will be out of the projects and the slums. That they will be no longer the last hire in the first fire. But the last shall be first and the first, first shall be last. So and these will be the Israelites, so-called Black Hispanic and Native Americans. Right. Thank you. Thank you yep, so most much. definitely. I appreciate you guys. Most yeah. definitely. Right here, right here. Pound, pound, pound. Yep. Yep. So, so who are the Israelites? I want to see if you're an honest man. If I'm an honest man? Yeah, who are the Israelites? Black Native black people that's right so-called black people so-called latinos and native Americans absolutely that were once lost now but now found. found in the last days absolutely because god gave us this authority to find out the prophecies absolutely. and to declare it amongst the world appreciate you most definitely so that makes me an israelite yeah there you go well you don't really get the eyes all right so 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 yeah man you brother you know it was a good conversation over there he kind of just came up out of nowhere and What's going on here? He was curious. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know if you got it on camera, but he admitted to said that the Jewish people were the Israelites, man. That's one of the worst doctrines ever. Go to give me Ezekiel chapter 30, uh, 38, I believe. And I broke my dog. One, one of the Jakes, one of the Jakes subscribed to the channel. He said, I right, if I comment, y'all brothers going to, you know, talk to me. Oh, but the other says. Jake, the other Jake get down with the Christians. So I told him, once I told him, I was like, nah, them Christians ain't gonna save you. He left, but the other brother said, you know, he gonna, he said he gonna comment and, you know, he, he looking to uh, get a response from me. Uh, I mean, see if you're 36 and one. Who that sitting over there? So, oh, okay. Ezekiel 36 and one. Well, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse one. Also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. So the enemy has said against Israel, aha, right? Aha is like, I got you, right? I got you in the, I got you in the jam. I, I've bamboozled you. You believed my lie, right? I caught you in a snare trap. Look at him, I got him in the dungeon. The enemy have said aha to the Israelites. And a lot of our people are under that same spirit of aha to the enemy. You're in Catholicism. You're in all manner of wickedness. You believe a lie. Right? You know what? Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because they have made you desolate and swaddled you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. Right? So we're we are desolate on every side and we're a possession to the heathen. Everybody that's going to go to some type of Sunday church, they're in destitute and they're in subjection to the heathen because the philosophy and the doctrine that they're serving is not of the Most High God. Right? Read on. And ye are, and are, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers. And we're taken up in the lips of talkers. Right? Like this government. They always talk and they, all, like, they promise us that, uh, 40 acres and a mule. They promise us reparations, right? They promise us to teach us the truth, all these things, right? Read on. And are an infamy of the people. Read. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel. Read. Hear the word of the Lord God. Right. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and division to the residue of and so like the end of the heathen that are round about. Read on. Therefore thus said the Lord God. Therefore thus said the Lord God. Here's the point. Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Who's the heathen? God spoke against the residue of the heathen. Read. And against all Idumia. Idumia is the Greek name of saying Edom. Edom 
is the name of white people in the Bible. Right. And God is against white people in the Bible. And they get mad at us for saying that. But guess what? We don't give a right. damn. Right? I'm just Bible. saying. We don't care. Right. Right. Read on. Which have appointed my land into their possession. And they appointed God's land into their possession. They took over the land. They put all manner of witchcraft on it. They try to separate it, put some fake uh, water, right? In 1948, 1947, during the Balfour Declaration, read. And if you uh, go study up on Jacob Rothschild that the guy just killed, he admitted it, right? He said about the, the Balfour Declaration, they came up in there and they're converts, and they're not actually God's chosen people. That's right. Right, but we are God's chosen people. Right. Read on. But the joy of all their heart but the spiteful mind. Right, the spiteful mind like Jacob Rothschild and all the Rothschild families, man. And all those nasty Rothschilds that live in nasty Pinehurst and Durham and on all the private islands elsewhere. Right, we're against them. Right, read on. To cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills. Right, so we, we, we prophesy against them, against the Idumians and white people and our enemies. We prophesy for our people. Right? right. Like, brother, do you know your God given nationality? What's nationality? So what's nationality? Yeah, like who are who are we actually? I don't even know what I was told. And what and tell us what you was taught and sort of because we were probably taught the same thing. They from he's from he's from Africa. Okay. Well, not not he's not from Africa. He's from here, but uh, from the slave trade Africa. From the slave trade of Africa. Yeah. Now, like for example, if I was to like go to a job and fill out a job application, what op what um, options do they give me to fill out for my nationality? Uh, we, we, we don't got one. We don't got one. See that? We don't got one because they name they name us African American. How can we be from African American? Think about that this morning. And a little deeper, Africa is named after a white man, Leo Scipio's Africanus. That's right. It's no, no African Jamaican or African. Yeah, it's no African, African Jamaican. You see that? Uh, Trinidadian. You see that? You ever heard of an Ethiopian African? No, they don't call themselves Ethiopian. Yeah, yeah. So they, they know their nationality. And we can't be American because America is named after another white man, uh, uh, America Vespucci. He was a map maker. And we know that white people wasn't here first. We know that our people was here first. So we gotta find out who we are by name. Would you like to find out who you are, brother? We gonna show you out of the Bible. Brother. Right. And we're not gonna charge you. I'm not gonna say, well, give me five dollars. Let me show you. Yeah, All right, you gonna ask this brother for some money to, five. no, we gonna give it to you for free, brother. Free. Cause this was taken from us. Our God given name. We about to give it back to you. That's right. You ready for it? All right, the brother said he ready. Come. All right, give me Isaiah 44. Well, you got a special name. You have a special name, which is why the earth is against you and your race of people, right? The creator of the heavens and the earth chose your race of people. Right. Right, you come from a chosen race of people. Indeed. We're about to show you that, right? Read that. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse one. Read out. Yet now here, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Israel, whom I have what? And Israel, Israel whom, whom I have, I have chosen. chosen. God has a chosen race of people. Right. Did you know that? Yeah. You knew that God had a chosen race of people. And what's their name? We just read it. Israel. Israel, the Israelites. Now, if God has a chosen race of people, we have to find out where they are. And what does the Bible say there would be? Or what condition would they be in? Things of that nature. Right? I want the Bible the best. You don't know the Bible the best? <laughs> well guess what? We're gonna give we're gonna give it to you. That's right. And in the future you may know the Bible the best, brother. Huh? All you gotta do is accept these words that we give to you today. Right? Now give me the book of uh, Judges chapter two and verse eleven, the classic precept. This is the book of Judges chapter two and verse eleven. This is what God said to the Israelites. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Read. And served Balaam. So Balaam is a false god. It's not a, it's, it's, it's not a god. It's false. It's set up as a trap. God said his chosen people ended up serving that false god. He said the children of Israel did evil. That was an evil thing to do. Because the first commandment says, have
had no other gods before me. Right? You can't serve two gods. You gotta serve one God, and it's an order to do it. Whatever order the most high ordained you to serve God, you gotta follow that order. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself in a situation. You gotta follow. You gotta follow God. So the children of Israel served a false God. Now, a righteous father would do what to his children when they disobey God? Or when they when they disobey him? He would punish them, right? God is we get that from God. That concept or that spirit rather comes from the Almighty God. So God is gonna punish his children. And let's read about it. Verse 14. Verse 14! And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. God was so mad that he said, I'm hot at the Israelites. Right? Read on. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers. The judgment for serving that false God was being delivered to the hands of spoilers. A spoiler is another government, another race of people. You're now, you once was in God's hands, now you're in the hands of the other people. Read on. That spoiled them. And those other people spoil God's chosen people. To be spoiled means to be robbed, to be mistaught, to be mistreated. Right? Read on. And he sold them. And God did what to the Israelites? And he, he sold, sold them. them. Read. Into the hands of their enemies round about. So they were given to the other races, robbed, and then they got sold to other people. Whose history does that sound like? What race of people went through that type of stuff? Us. That's right, brother. Us. That sound like when I when I watch 12 Years a Slave or groups, groups or when I go downtown and I look and they say, okay, well, these are the slaves. This is what they went through. We can read about that history, not just in magazines or uh, on a Netflix movie or at your local library, but you read about it in the Bible, in the Holy Bible that everybody say they believe in and that they allegedly read every Sunday or every day. Right. But nobody's identifying who's being spoken to. When you read something, you have to have a, you have to identify, you have to have a target audience, right? You have to say this applies to this people and they those people have a name. So what you're finding out is the Bible is a book about your history. That's right. About your writings and your records. That's literally what the word that's that's what the definition of the word bible means it's the records of the israelites uh, and you will be an israelite right the so i'm gonna show you some more brother give me deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26. this is what moses said to the israelites and moses was a prophet right you know what it means to be a prophet to bring information yep to, well to bring information but to foretell right like if i was to tell you i say wait well, hey, brother um if you were to you know tap your foot three times oh, prophesy, yeah. to there prophesy you go, right you know things that are going to happen later on in the future so read that deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26 behold i set before you this day a blessing and a curse a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the lord your god which i command you this day and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. So Moses told them if they keep the commandments, they'll be blessed as a race. If they break them, what did he say will happen? You'll be punished. Well, the word that he used specifically was a curse. Right? That's it. That's an altar. altar. You said that's what? That's an altar. That's permanent. Yeah. Well, it's going to be for an elect amount of time. Because we have to read the prophecies that God said. So we're gonna read one of them and we're gonna identify who's being spoken to. All right, give me Deuteronomy 28, 54. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 54. This is one of the curses that God is gonna put on his chosen people and the chosen people are called what? The Israelites, right? Read that. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. Come a little closer, brother. Tender delicacy is being cordial, kind, and brotherly love to his own race of people. 
God said for breaking the commandments, instead of being cordial and kind to your own race of people, what would happen? His eye shall be evil toward his brother. His what? His, his eye shall be evil, evil toward his brother. What race of people got an evil eye toward their own race of people? That's, see our, that? Our race. Give me an example. You said what? Our race. Our races? It's like our, our race. Our race. Yeah. Give me an example. How is our race evil towards one another? Give me an example. Everywhere you go. Lot don't lot pull each other down. Yep. Uh, try to keep people below the position in. Yep. Uh, a lot of gang stuff. A lot of gang stuff. Yeah. See that? Yeah. And then, and then, yes. And he said it every way. That's that's true in every way. Right? Evil toward his brother. What else God said? And toward the wife of his bosom. And evil toward the wife of his bosom. Right? Going into the marriage structure. So-called black people, you know, it's, it's kind of like our race not even getting married anymore. In the 30s and the 40s, we were married, 20s. Now, they don't even desire marriage. Or if they do, it's out of order. Chaos, confusion. And to the wife of his bosom, read on. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Oh, he's gonna stay. Which, which he, he shall, shall leave. leave. God is identifying who his people are predicated upon the situation that he's going to have them in by the curses in the Bible. That makes sense? God said that his race of people will have an evil eye toward their brother. It's like gang violence. That's like murdering your own brother. Evil eye toward his wife of his bosom. That's like a Tyler Perry movie or something. Right? And of the remnant of his children, he'll be evil, which he shall leave. See that? So let's read another punishment that God said he was going to do to the Israelites. Verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So God took the Israelites out of Egypt. You remember the story of Moses? He went into Egypt and said, Pharaoh, let my people go. You know about that, right? So God freed the Israelites out of Egypt. They were in slavery in Egypt. Remember that? Yeah, before Egypt. That's right. So God said if they break the commandments, they got to go back to Egypt. Meaning what? What were they doing in Egypt? Return the uh, bondage. Return the bondage. See that? Now, how do our people get to America? Transportation-wise. Oh. Uh, well, they, well, they they say bondage. Uh, well, we we were everywhere. We were. We were. Yeah. But how did our people get to America? <laughs> bondage. Yeah. By what part of transportation? On um, a ship. By a ship. And you think that's in the Bible? Yeah, it's I don't. I know it's a lot of ships in the Bible. I don't know. I don't know that story. But do you think God said, "I'm gonna send my African American black, so-called black, to America on a ship"? I don't know, brother. We're gonna read. It. Right, read again from the top. Now remember, what's the name of the people that we're reading about? Israelites. The Israelites. This is what God said would happen to them if they break the commandments. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. You're going to go to Egypt or slavery, bondage again. How are you going to get there? With ships. With what? With, With ships. ships. One more time. With, With ships. ships. You see that? What people went to? Slavery on a ship. Us. Only one race of people, right? I mean, that's it. Only one race of people. And, it, and it's still happening to this day. Some of our people are getting transported over in Libya, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, this happened, this prophecy was fulfilled. The tribes of Judah and the other tribes, right? we ships, read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Like the transatlantic and sub-Saharan slave trades that happened to us. God said that this will happen way before it happened. Read on. Thou shalt see it no more again. Right. And there. And there when you get off of the ships, God said this will happen. Ye shall be sold. Ye shall be sold. Right then we get sold. Who are we sold to? Uh, what other traders who ever bought us? Right. But what, what was their race? Who who who? who what people sold us? The white and Arab. <laughs> yeah, that's right, brother. Right in the Arab. Right. Among other races as well. And they and those people are called what? There we be sold unto your enemies. Sold unto our enemies. That? So those people that we were sold to 
aren't our friends. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sold us. They wouldn't have raped, robbed, and murdered us. They wouldn't have lied to us for this long. You gotta be an evil person to rape a whole race. Just rape them. That's wicked. Right. Right? Yeah, rape is not of God. Right? Sold it to your enemies, read on. For bond men. Bond men. And bond women. Read on. And no man shall buy you. We haven't been redeemed. Right? Those people that sold us, great robbed and murdered us, huh? they didn't redeem us. Right. They didn't say, hey, here's your wealth back. Hey, here, you know, take back your coach. Hey, take back your gold, your wealth. They didn't give that back, so they still got it. And they still doing all the same thing too. Still doing the same thing to us. Now, who are we according to the Bible that we just found out? Israelites. Israelites. That's right. Now, why did that happen to us? For disobeying. For disobeying. And so, if our disobedience got us in this situation, how do we get out of the situation? Man. That simple. What do we have to obey? The levels, the steps, the rules. The rules. Not, not man's rules. God's rules. God's rules. Now we have to find out what are God's rules. That's what we have to find out. Because guess what? They don't teach God's rules in, in, in school. They don't even teach God's rules in church. Right. In church, they'll read you a Bible verse and give you a whole motivational speech and, 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 and try to strong arm you to give them your money and call it tithes and offerings. When tithes and offerings in the Bible is something totally different. So we have to find out what God's rules are so that we can get out of punishment. That's really, that's, the, that's what this whole thing is about. Finding out God's rules so our race of people can get out of punishment. It's that simple. Nothing, nothing less, nothing more. Right? So let's find out some of God's rules. All right, give me the book of, let's go to Leviticus. All right? Yeah, the classics. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swan, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. You know what swine is? What's that? Pig. Pig. Can we eat that according to God? We can't eat it. Right, read on. He is unclean to you. Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. Read. They are unclean to you. So if we were to eat pig, swine, we would be in sin. Right. Christian church tell you, oh, well, God cleanse all of that. No, 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 no. They don't know how to read the Bible, right? We cannot eat swine or pork. That would be a sin according in the eyes of the Most High, right? So if we were to do it, we have done that. We All we have to do is repent. Don't do it anymore, right? What else can we not eat? Jump, uh, keep reading. First God. Right? What's going on, brother? All right. All right. You know we're the Israelites, right? God's chosen people? Yeah. All right, brother. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. The Lord said you can eat anything in the waters that has fins and scales on it, on the same body. All right? So these, these are the rules. Now we're we getting into the rules and regulations. You know you play basketball, you got rules and regulations. You can't step out of bounds. Right? You got to shoot a free throw. Right? You know, you can't you can't grab and hold a brother. You know what I mean? You know, you can't take five steps and then, you know, no, you, there's rules and regulations to this thing. Right? You know, God has rules and regulations. You know what I mean? So now we're reading the rules. These, this is the rules and regulations of God. You know? There's people that stay up all night. I want to become a better basketball player. Wow. Give me the rule book. Wow. And then they read the rule book and it's okay, well, okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay, the step curry move, okay, I'm gonna do the step curry. And then they get they get mighty and mighty. You can get mighty with God, brother. Right? Read the rule book, read it, okay, okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay, set, okay, the pass over. And then the next thing you know, brother, you get mighty in this thing. Right? And then the next thing you know, you sit on a throne somewhere as a king, judging the world. Right? That's how you get mighty, brother. Right? Read them. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas. And in the rivers of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall what? They, they shall, shall be, be an, an abomination, abomination unto, unto you. you. So the rules is, if anything in the waters, the seas, that does not have fins and scales, it's an abomination unto you. Now, it's so-called Saturday, there's many establishments open. 
and many people are eating things and they don't know the rules and regulations. And they are trying to figure out why their race is still at the bottom of society. So the rules, one of the rules and regulations was don't eat anything that comes out of waters that doesn't have fins and scales. So what doesn't have fins and scales in the waters? Shrimp, lobster, crab, muskies, oysters. Oh yeah, yeah. See that? Shellfish. Right? Sea moss. Yep. Those are that's a living thing in the waters. Now eating those things will put you in sin. And you would be a product of destroying the earth when you eat those things. Because those things are supposed to cleanse the earth. They have a duty and a role on the, on the earth. They're living at the bottom of the ocean to cleanse the ocean, right? What's going on, family? Y'all be Israelites, God's chosen people. So we have, the earth has its own filtering system, right? On the earth, for mankind to get rid of your disposable things, you give it to the hurdle of swine. That's where you're supposed to put your trash, right? The trash bin is not supposed to come every Tuesday and Thursday. You get your trash, take it to some uh, landmine, they either dump it in the ground or burn it or throw it in some ocean somewhere. Yeah. That's that's out of order. That's that's not knowledgeable. That's not smart. Because at some point it's going to overflow or it's going to have some type of side effect within the earth. Right? Also with the ocean. Um, you're not supposed to take out the shellfish, the, the, the shrimp, the crab, the lobster, because what's filtering the water now? Now you have no water filter. If there's no water filter, the, the um, air is gonna get polluted, right? So the earth is all jammed up because we don't know the rules and regulations, and we're following the rules and regulations of the white man rather than God. It makes sense? So we can't eat shrimp, crab, pork, lobster, all that madness, right? That's what the white man does, all right? You don't feel good because it got spirits on it. It's sin, right? So if you were to have done that, all you do is you face the Most High, you face the Lamb, and you, you know you say, "Lord, forgive me." I didn't really know. And then you name that sin, and then you ask the Most High to have mercy on you, and then you don't do it no more. Next thing you know, you're a king. It's that simple. That's, the, that's, the, that's what the Lord told us to do. If all so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans right now, we were to face the East and ask the Lord for forgiveness at the same time, it'd be, a, it'd be an earthquake or something, man. And we profess that we were the Israelites. The angels will come back. The angels will literally crack the firmament, crack the waters within the waters, and the firmament come back and save us. And then we will, have, we will be in rulership and own everything. You got a precept? God. Bring it up. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 1. And verse 9, if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. So God is still mad at us. He is He's faithful and, and just to, to forgive, forgive us. So obviously, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we had not confessed our sins. Because the Lord said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then I will heal their land. And we've been in America for hundreds and hundreds of years, and, and God ain't did nothing for the so-called black man. They still get shot down in the streets. They still don't own nothing. They still ain't got nothing. They still singing, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Come by here. They're singing all these same songs that they've been singing because we haven't truly repented. Right. Because we were taught what repentance was by our enemy, not what the scripture said. Right? You know what? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Right. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A little more on that. If we say that we have not sinned. If we say we have not sinned. We make him a liar. Right. And his word is not in us. Right. Because we've sinned. Right. So we're commanded to repent. Right. We all are. Right. There's many things we have to repent for. We have to uh, repent for adultery. We have to repent for serving false gods. Covetousness. Right. Lying. We got to repent for it shaving off our beard, we gotta repent for tattoos, all these things. So, but once we do that, guess what? We get the kingdom of heaven. Right. Right? So we get a more, brother, some more rules and regulations. Uh, 
Uh, give me the Sabbath day. You ever heard about the Sabbath day? When is the Sabbath day? We're going to find out, right? Exodus 28. Exodus 28. Come. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So there's six days for you to labor and do all of your work. You know what? But the seventh day. The seventh day. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Yeah, so the seventh day is the Sabbath day. We live in a periodic of, of weeks. That's what the word uh, Sabbath means, the seventh day. That seventh day of the week would be what day? Monday. What would be the first day then? No, Saturday is the seventh day. That's right, because Sunday is the yeah. first day. No, I, right? So, if the world is doing one thing, we got to say, okay, I know the world is doing that, but I got to do what God said. Right? So now we know the Sabbath day is on the seventh day of the week. Right? So they lied to us. You know, that's right. That's backwards. We start our week on Monday. Yeah. You see that? They say you start off your week on Monday, but the first day of the week is Sunday. And the seventh day will be Saturday. So the white man got us all jammed up, discombobulated. But he got to be quicker than that because the Holy Spirit gave it back to us. You know, right. like that commercial, got to be quicker than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, got to be Yeah, yeah almost had it. He almost had it. Almost. Yeah, the Lord said if, uh, I can't quote it, but um, uh, almost, he almost deceived the elect. Uh, roughly so paraphrased. It means so very much. Like like that. That's right, that's right. So, we, we tensed us ahead of the so-called white man. Although he think he tensed us ahead of us, we know what's about to happen. So, the seventh day, what can't you do on the Sabbath day? Read on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. In the Sabbath day, we're commanded not to work. Work for hire. Right, read on. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. What day does everything happen on in America? Game Sunday. The pe people are off. You know, it's, it's, it's Sunday. You see that? The yeah, the, 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 the weekend. Yeah. Right? Because the so-called white man knows. Hey, I don't want these niggas to keep the Sabbath day. Right? So I'm gonna pay them on Friday. Oh, right? the whole weekend. Yeah, the whole weekend. You see that? Yeah. And, and they, they want you to sin on the Sabbath day. Sin on the seventh day. You see that? So you see that makes sense, right? So they lied to us. So we're not supposed to work on the seventh day. And now we know we in America, we in slavery. We in, this is the land of, of, of captivity. So you gotta do what you gotta do in most cases, but you pray and fast, but you can keep that day better and better as time progress. What I gotta do right now. See that? Yeah. What you mean, you gotta go to work? No, I mean, get this right. That's right, that's right, that's uh, right. And we here to help you, brother. Yeah. Now, another thing, when does a day begin? Like, if I was to say, okay, it's now tomorrow, or this is a new day, what time What time is that? Because I have to know how to keep the Sabbath day, I, meaning I have to know when that day starts. What, 12 in the morning? That's what they tell us. That's what they told me. Well, let's find out. Give me Genesis chapter 1 and verse uh, 14. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. What's going on, brother? Uh, you be God's chosen people of Israelite. You got repent and come back to the Lord. Right, read that. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So the Lord said, let there be lights in the firmament. What are the two major lights in the firmament? The sun. The sun and the moon, right? And the reason that they are is for days and seasons, yeah. for you to calculate time. Like back in the day, we didn't have you know, a G-Shock watch or a Rolex or nothing like that. Calculating our time by the no, elements she, well, thereof. Like now, you said what? Suck it. Okay. Now give me Genesis 1 and 5. Genesis 1 and 5. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. Right, we know about that. Light, light is day, darkness is night. Check this out. And the evening and the morning. The evening and along with the morning is what? Were the first day. You see that? What does that mean? What happens at evening time? The sun sets. The sun sets. That's the beginning of your day. 
when the sun goes down, you're now starting a new day. Because okay. the evening and the morning is the first day. Right, your day is going to start going into darkness. Like right now, we're, we're entering, we're, we're about to enter into a new day. All right? Read that. Book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 32. Right, verse 32. So like, hey, how you doing, family? All right, well, who will be God's chosen people, the Israelites? All right. Read that. And at evening, when the sun did set. So evening, the sun sets, right? And that is how we know we're now starting a new day. Not like the white man took 12 o'clock at night. Like, why would he randomly pick that beer? Like, that's random. That's, that's so, why not 11.59, right? What's wrong with that? What's the difference between 11.59 and 12? You see what I'm saying? So, the so-called white man is, he's the devil. He's, the word devil means deceiver. Right. Right? We calculate our time. When that sun sets, that's the beginning of the day. So, we, we was keeping the Sabbath day. It's still the Sabbath. It's about to be over with. It's about to be a whole new day. We're about to enter into the first day of the week. You see that? So you keep the Sabbath day with uh, you no know, working uh, to the best of your ability, no buying and selling on the Sabbath day. You know, no cooking, no cooking on the Sabbath day. Right. That's how you keep the Sabbath day. Prepare your things prior to. All right, we're gonna get the, we'll give them another commandment. All right, what is another commandment? Give me Leviticus uh, 19 and 26. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 26. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood. So God said you can't eat anything with blood in it. Alright, so if I was to say, well, you know, I want me a steak. Give it to me raw and rare. That's wicked. Yeah, that's evil. You can't just eat anything with blood in it. You, you, you know, people that do that, they're liable to eat a person. Live. Right? Why they looking at them? You know, there's races of people that do that. And we know who those races are. Right. You see that? So you can't eat anything with blood in it. Read. Neither shall you use enchantment nor observe times. You can't use enchantment. You can't say, well, I'm going to go pray to this African deity God. And uh, I'm going I'm to I'm give them money every month. And I'm going to wear this necklace. There's people that do that. And it's going to protect me. Yeah, there's people that serve all type of deities and gods. And they use enchantments. Another way of enchantment is, uh, you know, uh, putting astrology as your god. You know, people say, "Well, I'm, I'm an Aries. That means uh, on this day, this is going to happen to me." What it was? What Bible verse told you to believe that? That's going off. Right. That's wicked. What's your zodiac sign? Oh, you a, uh, uh, you a, uh, you a Pisces? Oh man, you man, we get along. How the hell are you gonna know you get along with somebody? Because of, of a doggone zodiac sign. Yeah, you putting wickedness and spirits on yourself. And many of our people, they into that madness in the last days, boy. They oh, my heavy. goodness, that's man. Heavy. They in it. Sense, First thing they ask, well, what's your zodiac sign? Yeah, I want to know. See, I, 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 yeah, I want to know if we uh, can, uh, can have deep conversations together. What do you mean if we can have deep conversations together by my zodiac sign? That's going off. You're putting your faith and trust into enchanting. Are right? you you worship? You're now worshiping something that God created. Why would you worship something that God created? That's wicked, right? So we can't do that, right? What else? Uh, twenty-seven. Come, huh. verse twenty-seven. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads. Right. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. So you can't take a razor and put it to your head and do the Michael Jordan. That's what uh, hand mics or Africans do. Take razors and just completely bald their heads all the time. And just, you know, say, but well, this is my thing. And then you can't take a razor and take off your natural beard off. You gotta grow that thing out like, you know, like the Lord wants you to do. Right. So that would be a sin. But in this society, what do they tell you? Well, if you wanna join my military, you gotta shave off your beard. Get this job. Yeah, you want to get this job? Clean, clean have a, have a clean. As soon as they take you on legal slavery, they cut it all off. You see that? As soon as they take you on the legal slavery. And then, that's what they did with us when we landed over here, got on the slave ship. They started uh, cutting all our facial hair off and things of that nature. All right, what else? Verse 28. 
You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. So you can't make cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Right? You can't say, oh, rest in peace, grandma. Right? Granny. Good grandma. You can't do that. Rest in You can't put it on your body. Otherwise, you would have been born with that up there. Right? Why would you want to change the molecular structure uh, or the outside structure, rather, on your skin when God made you perfect already? Right. Right? He made you in his image. He made you how he wanted to make you. Right? Meaning you perfect. Right? Before you was even born, thought of, God even formed you already perfect. So a brother might say, man, my lips are pretty huge, man. I don't know why I got these big. Hey, brother, your lips look like God's, brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know? So you can't make any cuttings in your flesh, especially not for the dead. Right, read on. Nor print any marks upon you. And we're not supposed to print any marks upon us. Now, we, we, we've adopted that custom in America, but it goes way back to, to even... Egypt. So you said especially for the dead, right? Well, read one more time. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. So we can't make any cuttings in our flesh for the dead. Because that's 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 what most accepted one. Most right. accepted tattoo if anybody get it for the for dead for the dead relative or something. Yeah, that's that. They make they make that the most acceptable one. Yeah, most definitely. They yeah. do that all the time. And let's and say specific. Exactly. So let's say I went to battle, I went to war, and uh I killed the Midianites. I said I put a cut on my body. This is representing the million. I can't do that either. Uh, the Black Panther. No. Yeah, like the Black Panther no, movie. Uh, yeah. What was his name? Uh, John. Uh, I forgot. But they got all those cuttings, those marks. Yeah, yeah that, those are not. That's not. That's not our history. You know. Got precept. God, this, uh, uh, Book of Deuteronomy chapter fourteen and verse one. Ye are the children of the Lord, your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. So you see a lot of rappers, they put them lines in their eyes. That's a custom that came back from the heathen. That's the things that they used to do. They used to make cuttings between the eyebrows. Okay. That, okay. That's where a lot of, you see a lot of rappers, they be doing that. Yeah, they do that or like just even under your eyes, like ancient um, Egyptian or African guys, they'll put cuttings right here or cuttings right here that represent something. Oh, you got, if you go to TikTok, type in, um, uh, uh, that's why different I got, tribes. That's why I got that. Huh? That's why I ended up getting nuts. You see that? Mm. You know? Also, now what you have to do is you just have to repent for that. Right. Right? You get up, you face the east, throw your hands up, and you call on the name of We're going to tell you the name of God, too. Right? Because God is just a title. God has an actual name. God's name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. Right? Yahweh. Right? Say it with me. Yahweh, Yahweh. Say it one more time. Yahweh. You see that? That's the name of the Father, the Heavenly Father. And you call on the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shah. Right? Yahweh Shah. Meaning, He shall save. That's what His name means. He shall save. He shall deliver. Right? In the name of the Father, His name is He is. Because He just is. He don't got no like. No birthday or nothing like that. We don't, we don't, we don't no deal with No beginning, no end. No beginning, no end. So you call on the name of the of the Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. You said, well, you know, Lord, forgive me for Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 26, for putting uh, uh, printing on my flesh. And the next thing you know, hey, you in this thing. You good, brother. Right. Uh. You on your way to the kingdom. Right. Right? Give yeah. me uh, give me. Uh, Give me the book of uh, James 5 and 20 real quick. St. James chapter 5 and verse 20. Right, give me um, St. John chapter 2 and verse 1. Let him know that he which I mean, co uh, converted the sinner from the error of his way. The Lord said, let him know that he that converted the sinner from the error of his way, read. Shall save a soul. Shall do what? Shall save a soul. He's still gonna get jacked up. Shall, Shall save, save a soul. soul. Well, God not gonna deal with the brother. Shall, Shall save, save a soul. soul. So yeah, brother, if you convert a sinner, right? And guess what? Your soul is now saved. Some but some people in the world they feel like they, it is. Yeah, it's it's yes, it, I'm damned. I'm damned. I'm damned. There's, there's nothing that I can do that I can right my wrongs. Yeah, there is something you can do, brother. All you gotta do is repent. In the name of the Heavenly Father and only God's Son. Now your soul is saved. Repent and be converted. Repent and be converted. Right? You know? So now, what you, what's happening right now is, this brother right here, this brother right here, this brother right here, 
they got buckets of water. They just throwing water on you right now. You can't see it, but it's happening. And that water is purifying, it's refining, it's cleansing. And you're becoming a new man, right? You're learning this new information about your heritage that was taken from you by the enemy, but now your brothers are giving it back to you. You're having a full course meal right now. Good meals, alkaline from the heavens, right? You know, not from these nasty stores that they put GMO in and all that stuff. You know what I mean? All right, uh, read that. First uh, John chapter two and verse one. Look at First John chapter two, verse one. My little children, right? These things write I unto you that ye sin not. These things that I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. You have an advocate, meaning you have a lawyer on your behalf. Read. Jesus Christ. Right, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach. The righteous. The righteous, man. Kwame Lot. Right? So the Lord said, what? If you sin, you got an advocate with the Father, his only begotten son, you repent, and guess what? You can be righteous just like that, man. Right? You can do it, brother. Right? This brother can do it. This brother can do it. This right. brother can do it. We're all marching towards being perfect. Yeah. Right? Per being perfect is the goal. Because now we know how to get perfection. Because we got the rule book. We got the rule book. We know how to do the step back now. You know, all you got to do is watch the film. Right? right. Brother said, well, I want to be like KD. All right, brother. Well, get in the post. You know, get the moves down pat. You know, but say I want to be like Kyrie, boy, brother. You gotta, you know, you gotta do the ball handling. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get the layup package going on. All you gotta do is pick up the sword, read Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Judges, uh, Chronicles, right? Uh, Samuel, Second Samuel. Just read the scriptures. Right. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Revelation. Next uh, thing you know, now you in the league, brother. You see that? Right. Brothers wanted to go to the league. Yeah. Right? Get in the league by reading the scriptures, brother. Right? Then you get you a contract. Right? You get the con then you get the big contract. Next thing you know, you win this thing. Whole family good now, brother. Yeah. Right? So it's all about the scriptures. Give me uh, uh Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 59. Right, Psalms chapter 119 and verse 59. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 59. I thought on my ways Read. and turned my feet unto thy testimony. I thought on my ways. I thought about how my life was, how I was living my life. I was conducting my life. I thought about how I thought that I was serving God. And then I read the scriptures. But then I turned my feet to the testimony. I turned my feet to what's written in the Bible rather than what I thought about God and how I wanted to serve God. Read. I made haste. I wait. I did what? I, I made, made haste. haste. What does it mean to make haste? Be quick with it. Be, be quick, quick with, with it. Yeah. Right? You can't be slow with this thing. You got to make haste. I made haste. And delayed not to keep thy commandments. You see that? You got to make haste to keep God's commandments. You can't say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. Now. I'm going to do it in a month or so. Yeah, give me, I, Lord, I, I'm going to give you a three weeks notice. You can't give the Lord three weeks notice. When the Lord comes to you, you got to accept it right then and there. What? These uh, th these precepts and the and the Lord calling on. Cuz this is this is a, this is the Lord calling on his chosen right now. Right? And it'll be a good thing to pick up the phone and answer. It. You know what I mean? Right bring it up. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 7. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord. Right? Make no make no what? Make no, no tarry to turn to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Read. And put not off from day to day. Yeah, you can't put off from day to day. Right? You can't say, well, I heard about all these things. I'm gonna watch some videos. Next year I'm gonna get it right. Because I'm too I'm too in deep with the, the sin that I like right now. Right? The sin that we in, you gotta put it off right then and there. Right? Right? And if you're not able to put it off right then and there, you have to make the steps to do so, right? And have the confidence that you can do it, right? So let's go back to the commandments. So we learned about the commandments, uh, no tattoos, no cutting of the flesh, things of that nature. Sabbath day, uh, we learned about what we can, what we can uh, eat, right? Uh, or what we can't eat, rather no pork, 
the pork on your fork, right? And we can't eat things at the bottom of the ocean or without fins and scales, rather. Shrimp, crab, lobster, uh, things of that nature. So we're gonna get a brother one more commandment. Um, what you got? Numbers? All right, Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, and verse 38. All right. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make their fringes and the borders of their garments. Read that one more time. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make their fringes and the borders of their garments. Read. Throughout their generations. All of them. Throughout their, their generations. generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So this brother right here, because he, he knows he's an Israelite. And that verse that speaks to the children of Israel, put fringes on the borders of your garments throughout their generations. So he got fringes on, right? He didn't make this up. God gave it to him as a heritage. This brother read that verse and he said, okay, I'm gonna put me some fringes on. That brother read that verse, he got him right then and there, right? He might've got him quicker than this brother, you know what I mean? That brother got him right, hey, that brother might've made his own, <laughs> you know? And this brother right here, he got unlimited fringes because he believes, right? So it said, put upon the fringe of what? Of the borders, a ribbon of blue. So this brother got a ribbon of blue, read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, right? And do them. See that? So this is like a commemoration for us to remember the commandments. Right. Uh, so, for, so, so if a white man came to me right now, say, hey, here's a chop of uh, pork chop, right? You should eat this. And let's say I was weak in the spirit, you know, the Lord might have me, you know, reach down to grandma. I said, oh, I got my fridge. Nah, I'm an Israelite. I remember all the commandments and I do. Right. Right. So the Lord gave this to us for a heritage and our enemy took it away from us. Right. So in due season, you will have to get you some fringes, brother. And, right. And if you need it, hey, brothers, to help. Brothers, to help you get some fringes. You can get these on Amazon.com. You can order them. You can order shirts. Uh, there's Israelite businesses with them already made up there. You can get them sewn up there. You can sew them up there yourself. You see that brother know how to sew. So this is our heritage. What's going on, kid? All right, we will be the Israelites, God's chosen people. That's right. All right. So. So yeah, you can get these from Joanne's Sewing Factory. Then you can sew them on, right? So the brother said he know how to sew, so and the brother might be mighty in this thing. Uh, uh, you know, the brother might be mighty. The brother uh, might come out here with some fringes better than you know he ain't never seen before. You know, but the fringes might be all the way down here. The brother might have five inch long, seven inch fringes, man. You know, so yeah, brother, this your heritage, right? Right, that was taken from you. So you gotta get it back. That's right. you, got, you are a new creature. You're you have a new name now. Give me Isaiah 62 and uh, two. Well, you have a new name, brother. Right, you don't got the same name no more. Right, you got a new name. Right, read that. Isaiah chapter 62 and verse two. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. Read on. And all kings thy glory. Read. And thou shalt be called. By a new name. What the Lord say? And thou shalt shall be, be called, called by, by a new, new name. name. So you're called by a new name, brother. What's your God given nationality? Who are we? That's right. That's right. So we the Israelites. Right. And I didn't say nothing. You didn't say that, man. The that scripture said that's it, what, brother. Right. The God said that. That's written in the Bible. Uh, that what? That we the Israelites. You know? I can't just wake up tomorrow and say, you know, I wish I want to be a Chinese man today. I can act like one, right? But it's about who you are, who a God called you to be. And God called you to be an Israelite, brother. That's right. Right? The word Israel means prince of power with God. Right? Our forefather was given that name because he had a mightiest spirit to wrestle with an angel. Most people, they would have wrestled with an angel. It might, it might burn up right then and there. But our forefather was able to do that. So he said, you know what? You got power with God. Why do you think so-called black people are able to do all these different things? Because we got power with God. You know? And guess what, brother? He said he wrestled with angels and giants. Well, not well, well, yeah, we wrestled with giants, but those giants were actually people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I I'd have been I'd have been stuck some places with some giants. See that? I couldn't get had to had to deal with you know what I'm saying? See that? In, a, in a small space, so, so you, got, you gotta you gotta 
never been no Angels, but the Giants. That's right. I done had this spot. <laughs> Your forefather yeah. David wrestled with a Giant. David and Goliath. Right. And David overtook Goliath, man. Chopped his head off. Chopped his head off. <laughs> put him to death, man. His own sword. You know? We wrestled with uh, uh, with Giants. Yeah, tall he said humans are yeah, Big people. Are, That's right. Yeah, everybody not the same. Yeah. That's right. Give me that in uh, give me um, Deuteronomy where we have read right one and twenty eight. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse twenty eight. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse twenty eight. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart, right? Saying the people is greater and taller than we. This people is taller than us. These are these giant people. You expect us to beat them in a battle? Right? They taller than us. They're mightier than us. Read. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And they cities, we can't even get up inside there. How do we get up in there and see what's going on? And they, they done built it all up. Read. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakins there. Right. So we, we fought against giants in, during different chronologies of time. And we won those battles with the help of the Lord. Right? Which is why we have the spirit. Because we fight against giants every day as, 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 as Israelites. Right? You may be going through a situation right now, brother. You know? And it's a giant situation too. But you got the spirit to prevail. Uh -uh. You know? This brother may be going through something, but he has the spirit to prevail because our forefathers, we have the spirit of going against giants. Mm -hmm. Right? You know? So, got a precept? Come on. Can I bring it up? The book of Numbers chapter 13, starting at verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Right. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Right. We saw the children of Anak. Now, the Anakim is a race of people that God created that are predominantly taller than everybody else. Right. Now, these Anakims are your modern day, um, you know, people of Sudan, South Sudan, things of that nature. Right? The people that are tall, like uh, Manuk Bold, things of that nature. Right? These are tall races of people that have a genealogy of being tall. Right? You know? The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses. And Caleb, one of our forefathers, read. And said, let us go up at once and possess it. So he said, hey, listen, man, we got to go up in there. We go, hey, we about, to, hey we, about to, we about to beat them down, man. Let's go up in there and take what they got. That's what Caleb, Caleb stood up and said, man, these tall heathen, we got them, man. Right. Right, read on. For we are well able to overcome it. For we are what? For we are well, well able, able to, to overcome, overcome it. it. We well able to overcome them. Right. Man. Uh, We're not just going to overcome and kind of win. We're well able to overcome them. Meaning we're going to uh. destroy them. Why could we the Israelites? That's right. You know? How you feeling right now, brother? I got, what? I got back on track. You see that? I'm back on track. Back on track. Uh, right. On track now. Not back on track. I'm on track. Well, on track. Hey, you back on track because this was given to you before you was even born. And you got it back. We got it back as a race of people. You know, answer. That's right. That's right. So do you have any questions? Everything. Okay, all praises to for the uh, for the new week. All praises. So we're gonna give you uh, um we're gonna give you some information. We're gonna give you the YouTube channel. We'll give the YouTube channel, you know, where you can watch videos and get built up in the spirit. You know, excuse me, you know, the car is kinda jammed up a little bit. But they got the YouTube channel up there, the email, the Instagram. You know, you can hit us up on any one of those. And now watch the videos on YouTube, get built up in the spirit. We'll be back out here next Saturday. Check it out later. Soon I'll walk away from it. All yeah. praises. And yeah. if you got a Bible, when you watch it, follow along. Yeah, I need to get me a new. No, I got a Bible. I got a Bible. I keep a Bible in my, in my stuff. Okay, yeah. all, all praises. Yeah, all praises. I'll open it, but I'm going to open it now. All praises. Yeah. Got to open that. Yeah. That's, that's your book, Come. brother. Come. Yeah. Those are your writings. It's right. Right? Exactly. You said you had something? Come. This is the book of St. John, chapter 15, verse 3. Right. Now you are clean. Now you are what? Now you are, are clean. Read. Through the word. Through with, the who? Through the word. You clean through the word, brother. Read. Which I have spoken unto you. See that? Now you're clean, brother. That's right. Through the word. Which the word spoke unto you, brother. 
this word resonated with your spirit, made sense. Hmm, okay, I'm an Israelite. Okay, I see why my people are in this condition. Okay, I see how to get out of this condition. You see that? Now you're clean through the word. That's right. All you got to do is keep walking. Walk in the word. Live in the word. Hey, be the word, brother. Right? You're one of the sons of the prophets. That's right. So guess who you are? You're a prophet. That's right. You're the sons of a priest. So guess who? You're a priest. Yeah. You're the sons of a king. So guess what? You're a king. You're the son of God, an Israelite. All right? All praise to the Most High. What's your name, brother? Manuel. Say it again. Manuel. Manuel? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Manuel. Okay, yeah. brother Manuel. Yeah. Okay. All praise. Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you, brother. Yeah, yeah, take care. Yeah. All praise. Appreciate that. Now, one more before you go. What did God call your God nationality? Who are you? Israelite. That's, That's right. right. Brother Israelite. Brother Manuel. But the mind well off the scene, man. Oh, oh. No? All praise to the most high. Give me a uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19.